Hi, Trap Tribe. It's me, Ashley of Trap Pray Love. And for those of you that have been following me for a while since I've started my YouTube, you know that I've tried to upload at least once a week. And lately, that has not been the case. And there have been a lot of things that have gone, been going on in and out of my life. But for the most part, the reason why I haven't been uploading weekly is because of this video right here. You know from the title and the thumb link that this video is about Ye, the artist formerly known as Kanye West. Um, we're not going to get a lot into um, his music in this video. There's so many other videos um, about that. Check them out. I'll link some in the description. But this video is definitely going to talk about me personally. I'm going to talk a lot about my views. Um, for some of those that are triggered by certain topics, I will be talking about white supremacy, anti-Semitism, um, misogyny, as well as a couple other tough um, subjects. So if that is something that um, you can't really handle, um, you can check out some of my other videos or um, just wait for um, me to finish the Kanye series. But um, for those of you that do want to stick around and hear my opinion on a lot of these things, um, let's just get into it. So in this video, I just want um, to make clear that I may go in and out of referring to Ye as Kanye. Um, that's not because I don't um, respect his identity and things like that, but I definitely don't want to muddle in an artist changing their name to trans people <laughs> and their identities. So um, for those of you that are triggered by that, I don't want to um, make that an issue as well. So um, please just give me some grace in this video. I'm going to try to refer to him as the name that he wants to be referred to. But um, in writing this video, I kind of went out of using Kanye and saying yay. Kanye West is arguably one of the most influential artists of our generation. I mean, there's no dick writing here. I think some of his music is not even playable, but his influence cannot be denied from fashion to other artists right now. Um, Kanye definitely is up there when it comes to completely changing how music is. One of the um, fondest memories I have as a child is um, watching Akira for the first time at like 11 or 12 with my dad one Saturday morning. He got like the director's cut of Akira and my dad was a fan of the soundtrack. So um, I was very familiar with Akira before I actually had a chance to see it. And so when I was a little older, I was allowed to watch it. I am so sorry. My cat is trying to jump where my setup is right now because I have catnip in this drawer. <sighs> I remember the first time that I saw Akira and it was with my dad and I'm not gonna lie, I did not understand a lot of it, but it was something that was just very fascinating to see. But it was also something that I could not talk about to a lot of my black friends because it was just something that I knew they wouldn't be exposed to. Like Akira, wasn't something that you can go on a blockbuster and just get like anime like you know a lot of my friends had to wait until Toonami to see anime and even with that it was only like Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, whatever. So um, it was something that growing up it was just like one of the things that my family did like it was just like watch anime and it was something that was like intertwined and just very close to my family and um, Anytime I see anime now, I just like so closely think of my favorite person and that is my dad because my dad definitely made sure that I was a nerd. How I got exposed to anime um, very young as well um, is that my dad is uh, military. So he was stationed in Japan and Korea. So um, a lot of times like I grew up really, really liking Sailor Moon and not like Sailor Moon that was, this was way before Sailor Moon was even on Toonami. Like I was watching the shit like with subtitles and actually it's crazy because my dad told me like that's really how he got me into reading. Like I would just watch like Japanese episodes of Sailor Moon and shit. And um, going to Kanye, I remember the first time that I saw the stronger music video and it was based off of Akira and seeing Akira images <laughs> being on the screen like on MTV for the first time and a lot of my friends wearing the glasses and just talking about, oh my God, this shit is so cool. It definitely made me feel like not so much of a nerd anymore. The stronger video in particular, why it was so important to me as like a nerdy black kid growing up was that not only that was it based off of Akira, um, I loved, um, anime so much but 
seeing black characters that looks like you is insane. Like Japan was very racist at how they drew black characters. They're getting better, but they still have fucking issues <laughs> with like stereotypes and shit. But I know that's like a cultural thing. But being able to see um, Kanye not only um, use like Japan's like imagery, I imagery and shit from Akira, but seeing it in hip hop. That was the first time that I saw like anime mixed with hip hop outside of like the boondocks and shit like that. I have a very fond like tie to Kanye West because of that. However, we can't excuse a lot of the shit that's going on now. I just want to say that this was not an easy video to make. <laughs> it wasn't, but I feel like with my platform, although small, it is growing. I feel like it is my responsibility to at least talk a little bit about this with my platform. I was not going to make a Kanye video initially when the shit first started happening, but um, it got to a point where as like a parent, as a homeschooling parent, as an influencer, as um, someone that I do believe like as like an activist, <laughs> you know, I do feel with my platform that I do have a responsibility to at least talk about it to the people that do follow me. Um, like the intersection <laughs> that I am speaking to the most with my audience um, are parents and also creatives, people that create, whether that's art, music. Um, and one of the things we're going to be talking in this video is separating the artist from the art and you know, free speech and where's the line drawn with that. And also I'm going to talk about my personal opinions with the Kanye shit. So um, definitely give me grace. This is this was a very extremely hard video to make. It like completely stopped all other <laughs> videos that I was making. But I feel like I need to just like push the Kanye shit out now and just be done with it so I can focus on other things. And I hope that you guys like do understand that. So let's get into like the meat of the shit right so unless you've been in like a coma for the last couple of years you know that kanye has always had his foot in his mouth um but like who gives a fuck right why is any of this a big deal like is not america a place for free speech you know in my opinion and this is like the key takeaway that i want taken away from this video is that when you have a platform and an influence as big as yay's you have to be constantly aware of what you say because the effects of that can be extremely dangerous. And this is not like a fear mongering thing or anything, it's just real. When you speak to a lot of people at one time, um, people can become radicalized and it can lead to violence. And, and it's just how it is with the internet. We can spread information like super fucking fast. We don't live in a time where someone can have a dumbass idea and it gets stuck in their head, <laughs> you know? Um, so, that's basically like my opinion on it. Provocation and just being provocative goes hand in hand with artistry, right? Uh, um, and it's been really happening a lot with um, American artists since um, right after World War I. Um, for me, I'm a huge fan of surrealist art. My favorite artist in the whole world is Salvador Dali. But a lot of people don't know that Salvador Dali was one of the most provocative people in the world. And he was kind of a piece of shit. Like, um, so after World War One, there was a surrealist um, like club where a bunch of artists like Max Ernst, I believe Picasso was in it, but a bunch of like the weird ass artists were like, yo, we're going to have a little group and we're just going to sit around and just paint shit all day. And we're going to start a movement, you know, with free speech. And we're definitely going to like fight back against like all the dumb shit that um, is going on right now. Initially, Salvador Dali was in this group, um, but he ended up getting kicked out because this nigga started like being too provocative and like being too wild. Like this was at the time where Hitler was gaining power and like this nigga was like, he started painting like nudes of Hitler and like he even tried to come up with like a weird racist religion where he talked about like colored people and white people are gonna run all of this shit. Like Salvador Dali really started like going off the rails. Like um, one thing that people don't know about Salvador Dali, he's had an issue with his dad for a long time. Like his dad didn't approve of like the woman that he wanted to be with, but his dad was also a piece of shit too. Like Salvador Dali's mom died and then his dad turned around and married his um, wife's sister. And like everybody had to act cool with that shit. Like it was to the point though with their relationship that Salvador Dali was known to like, he, he came in a condom 
and like tied the condom up and threw it at his dad and was like here we're even now that's all you ever gave me like this nigga was a prop don't know that i i believe Salvador dolly died in like the 60s like he he wasn't like a lot of people look at like artists that were like great artists and everything and thinks that they like lived like in the 1800s like picasso Salvador dolly all of these people like lived not that long ago like our grandparents could have like very well like met them and shit so um but Salvador Dali was a problem. The same dude that painted the persistence, the persistence of memory was a huge fucking problem. So like that begs the question, do you separate art from the artist? With Salvador Dali, he's still one of my favorite artists, but but at the same time, like when I see like art installations from him in DC, when they have it at the Hirshhorn and shit, I always make sure like when I'm there with my son or I'm there with friends, I always tell people like, but did you know that he was a Nazi sympathizer? Back to Kanye, like for me, for me, I really, really stopped like asking that question like, uh, but Kanye's Kanye, uh, where does it stop? For me, it stopped around the 2016 election time when I saw him walking around with a MAGA hat. The MAGA hat was the end of Kanye for me. It was the end of Kanye for me. Like I didn't think this shit was funny anymore because the thing with like the, the MAGA hat, like being provocative, trying to like, you know, get people to talk about you, that's one thing. But the other thing is too, like I don't think that Kanye understood the symbol of the MAGA hat. Now I'm not saying that the MAGA hat creates white, white supremacy. I'm not saying that the hat creates it, but Anytime white supremacy is around, a MAGA hat is not far away. And to me, that just personally, it completely, I, I completely just dipped out of uh, the Kanye shit. I just thought, nope, this is where I draw the line in the sand when it comes to Kanye. I do have a couple other other friends that are creators and I've like bounced the Kanye idea um, off of them. And a lot of them are just like, I don't want to make a video of it. <laughs> like, I, I don't want to talk about it. I kind of just ignore him. And that's what I was doing for the longest with Kanye. However, I decided to enter the chat <laughs> with the Drink Champs interview. And the reason for that is I noticed how many like yay stands there are out there that like completely defend him. And I don't think they fully understand like some of the history and the severity of this shit. So I am um, gonna read this verbatim for my laptop. Do you guys ever just do this when you're alone? Just like have an arm up. I don't know why that feels good sometimes. So I don't know. I'm cozy right now. I'm in my sweater. It's the winter time, but I'm going to read um, the tweet verbatim so I don't fuck it up. So on October 18th, Ye wrote, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people. The funny thing is I can't actually be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jews. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who I um, have a Twitter, but I'm not active on Twitter because I give a fuck about my mental health. <laughs> but when I did hear through, you know, the internet that this was a tweet and it was a verified tweet that he actually tweeted, um, you know, personally, I watch a not enough of like Netflix and documentaries that when someone says like there's a big conspiracy to be uncovered, I'm just like, okay, this sounds a little off, but like do tell, like nigga, like elaborate on this. Yay with this tweet piqued my curiosity. Like, I'm not a dumbass. Like, I knew that it, there was trouble. There was, a re there was red flags with this tweet. Like, I knew this tweet was not gonna go over well. Um, just because I know from um, educating myself on anti-Semitism and like reading certain shit and indulging in art outside of like ninth grade that were written by um, people of the Jewish um, religion and race, I know that like, anti-semitism is definitely blaming like them for the dumb shit that you're going through but however i do know enough about conspiracies that sometimes conspiracies do turn out to be true like with the tuskegee um experiments you know with ufos or when this one rapper was claiming that he was an android okay so that was a joke there was a rapper in 2018 that had like thousands of people convinced that he was actually an android and i need a drink anyway like back to yay i kind of feel like um yay has a bad case of not knowing when to bow out uh like bow out gracefully i feel like sometimes when artists are at the peak of their career or at like a really good place in their career it is good to just exit and stop you know really 
saturating us with like half ass finished content and shit. Um, and I'm not saying that all artists needs to need to stop um, creating when they're at their, you know, after they reach a certain amount of success. But there is like a phenomenon, like after you like, for instance, when Prince made Purple Rain, there's nothing else that he's made that has been in Purple Rain. Same thing with like, you know, Eminem is still rapping. Juicy J is still rapping. Um, I think a lot of times with rappers in particular, it's cool if you feature on songs for the rest of your life, but like, you know, Jay-Z is not making another blueprint. You know, so a lot of that is because the music industry has changed with the internet. Um, like back in the day, um, if you wanted to be a um, recording artist, you had to kind of go through the trials. <laughs> uh, there was like levels to becoming a mainstream artist, you know, but the music industry has changed. You get enough buzz on the internet and you can be a millionaire next week. And I feel like um, with Ye, um, a lot of his buzz and hype has just been controversy and not so much music. I feel like a lot of people right now would not be accusing Ye of ruining his legacy if he wasn't still putting out shit music and then having shit stances and takes on things. When Ye posted the Death Con 3 tweet, um, I like, it was a part of me where like my interest was piqued because I was like, you know, Okay, you're saying it's like some conspiracy. What the fuck is a conspiracy? Like, did like album lyrics get leaked on the back of the Torah or something? Like, what? Wh why the fuck are we going Death Con 3? And first of all, let's talk a little bit about Death Con 3. Death Con is not a thing. Um, he meant to say Death Con 3. And I'm not trying to say that he's an idiot and that he's an asshole and that he doesn't know what he's talking about. But that was kind of dumb. So DEF CON is a readiness level that's usually controlled by the president or the secretary of defense. It ranges from five, from five, which is like a readiness, to one, which one means like there is a nuclear war going on and the Air Force needs to be able to be mobilized in 15 minutes or less. By the way, um, the US has not been at DEF CON 3, <laughs> DEF CON, you, got, you made me fucking say it, at DEF CON 3 um, last since September 11th. So when Kanye was like, yeah, DEF CON 3 on Jewish people, I was like, I, I wanna know why, like, why are you saying this shit? Like, wh what, are you kidnapped or some shit? Like, what, why? Or do we need to be at September 11th readiness levels over Jewish people? Like what the f trying to speak for all black people when it comes to shit like this. However, being a black person, <laughs> you know that historically black people, there, there have been instances where white people went out of their way to um, fuck up black people, you know? So when I hear a black person saying, hey, this group is doing A, B, C, and D to me, I, as another black person, don't um, instantly discredit them, okay? So like my thing with the Death Con 3 tweet, I was just like, you know, being a pro black person was just like, hey, my nigga, what happened to you? Like, what what is going on? Um, and you know, that just, I think that comes from like culture, like me culturally, like I'm so pro black that, I don't get past the interview part of jury duty because I'm the type of person that I'm like, I don't know if police evidence is really evident. The weird shit to me was like Kanye posted the tweet and then it was just like complete fucking radio silence. And it was almost a little funny because like the first thing in the tweet, he was like, I'm a little sleepy. And I was just like, did he really just go to sleep? Did he just say we need to be at like readiness level DEF CON 3 and then just go to sleep? Maybe ain't nothing really going on then. Maybe this nigga's just actually lost his shit. So it wasn't until the Drink Champs podcast where he was asked specifically about the tweet. And um, let's break down his response a little bit. So some of the talking points that he brought up in the Drink Champs podcast, and this this is where like all the like crazy anti-Semitic shit with Kanye started. He made a comment that Jewish executives own the music industry and therefore they, um, and he actually said verbatim that Jewish people own the black voice. So was Kanye right by saying that? Yes and no. So historically white people have owned black art, you know, but it's not some evil Jewish conspiracy. That is anti-Semitic. And let's define anti-Semitism really quickly. So anti-Semitism is the feeling or showing hostility towards Jewish people. 
Now, here are some of the arguments that I see black people having when it comes to um, anti-Semitism, whether it's um, with Ye or from Kyrie Irving. It, the, um, a lot of their response is like, no one cared when Ye was saying white supremacist shit, but as soon as he gets on here talking about um, anti-Semitism um, anti and saying like Jewish shit, now you guys want to be upset. Now you guys, you know, because it's like, um, now he's saying shit that's upsetting white people. And look, that's a problem and that is true since when kanye was hanging out with candace owens i mean candace owens and was saying that george floyd's murder wasn't actually a murder it was a fentanyl overdose or when he had like weird thoughts about abortion and shit a lot of people on the right was saying that um kanye was a genius and that the media is trying to silence him and he's really just a great thinker but as soon as he started saying anti-semitic shit it was a complete 180 and being black i get it like the outrage over one thing and not the other sends a message to the other group that one group is more important. And that's white supremacists. And I believe that this Kanye controversy really just shows where the anger with America lies. It shows that, oh, white supremacy is okay, but anti-Semitism is not okay. And I'm not trying to compare the badness of two things, but I understand some of the outrage and some of the comparison that a lot of black people are talking about. We have two evil things that happen. We have slavery and we have the Holocaust, right? These are the two things that we're talking about. When the Holocaust happened, many governments went out of their way to repair um, the wrongs that happened during the Holocaust, whether it was actual reparations or whether it was just acknowledging it, teaching it in school so we don't repeat the shit. But when it comes to slavery, reparations, or even teaching about it, like in a lot of states, it's illegal to actually teach critical race theory, to teach slavery for what it was. And I even remember like being in high school and a whole month was set aside to talking about the Holocaust. Like we read Night, we read so many books about that. Like I know so many facts and so many ways that it started. But when it comes to slavery, I'm learning about it from Hulu. Here's the thing about black conspiracy theories and like, you know, what leads black people to believe hate groups and to see like those crazy ass documentaries the from the Negroes to whatever shit Negroes, what is, what is it called? The, you know, the Kyrie Irving documentary that he promoted. I feel like the reason that black people are more apt to get involved in conspiracy theories and things like that is because the real history is not being taught to us in that way. I feel like how we move from here is just like we teach about the Holocaust, <laughs> just like we teach about the Trail of Tears and what happened to Native Americans. We should definitely at the same time still teach black kids, black people, what is going on and how it really went on in our community. And I feel like that is a good starting place. Um, and I feel like if we really did do that, we would have a lot less confusion about our history. Do Jewish people own the black voice? No. Historically, when it does come to black art, white people in many ways have owned the black voice in a way. And I touched on this more in my Sukihana video in cultural appropriation. I'll link it somewhere. But there is no evidence that there has ever been a Jewish conspiracy. White people stealing black art and um, using it as their own. It's not so much as a, it's not a Jewish thing as much as it is white supremacy. And, um, and it happens anytime art is commodified. It happens when Netflix um, completely steals ideas as they do and make whole shows and never credit artists. Um, it happened when um, David Bowie um, came out with that under pressure song and then Vanilla Ice stole the shit. It's even the reason why Peloton has a, um, a Basquiat workout collection. Anytime where um, there's money to be made in art, um, usually the artist gets the shitty end of the deal because artists typically are strong in creating the art. They focus on the art and they're not business people. They don't know the business side of things. They don't know the capitalism side of things. So it is very rare for an artist to um, profit off of their art <laughs> in a way that is the best way for them. I don't know if we have any examples of someone like truly 100% like owning all of their art outside of like SoundCloud rappers. Like we could talk shit about SoundCloud rappers all day, but they're like some of the few people 
that, you know, on the business side of things have protect themselves and stayed out of like crazy shitty deals. Okay. Presenting an argument that Jewish people own the black voice is anti-Semitic propaganda. Anti-Semitic propaganda leads to violence against the Jewish community. We've seen it before. This is not a new thing that we've seen it a lot. Um, so how did this start? Okay. Sorry. I'm looking at my laptop a lot. Why throughout history have Jewish people been presented as the evil landlords of society? Like, where did all of this start? So basically, this started back with Jesus. So everyone knows that Jesus and all the disciples were Jews. They were. Um, however, um, Judas, one of his disciples, um, traded him in. He betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Um, since, you know, the death of Jesus, a lot of times when um, the betrayal of Jesus happened and all of that shit, they only make it out to be like the villain of the story. Even though everyone was a Jew, they only depict Judas as a Jew. And that's like fucked up though, because even though Judas didn't actually murder Jesus, he's the, he's depicted as the villain. <laughs> like, like he, he betrayed Jesus because he was Jewish, which is, and, and that's how a lot of paintings, a lot of stories, a lot of, um, a lot of Jews were predicted from day one. Um, after Jesus died, Christianity, um, be began, um, quickly spreading throughout the world. And um, back in the day, it wasn't like now where we set up governments that aren't, you know, completely religious based. Governments were set up, you know, and a lot of them were governed by religious tenets. And one of those religious tenets was um, that Christians shouldn't really be money lenders. So um, it was unlawful. Well, I don't know if it was unlawful, but if you were a Christian, you weren't supposed to be like a money lender because um, Jews couldn't grow in other industries. And Christians couldn't do money lending and um, do all that because of their faith. A lot of Jews found success in money lending. And here's the thing with money lending. Like no one likes borrowing money because the thing is, if you need a dollar for me and I say, yeah, I'll give you this dollar, but you're going to have to give me two dollars back. People don't like borrowing money. Like it's not an evil thing to um, lend money and borrow money. But a lot of people that led to people saying Jewish people are greedy. They only care about money. Da, 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 da. It's like the same type of shit when um, my neighbor pays her rent late and she's just like, why do I have to pay a late fee? Da, da. Like, nigga, like you fucked up. Like <laughs> you, you like that's how the shit works. So um, that led to a lot of anti-Semitic shit where um, it's been going on for hundreds of years where people say that Jewish people are greedy and, it, and it's not true at all. A big thing that a lot of people don't talk about is the bubonic plague um, in the dark ages. When the black plague spread through Europe, um, it was just killing fucking everybody. Um, now we can look back on it historically and know that it was spreading the way that it was because people weren't handling dead bodies correctly. And because of um, Jewish rituals with how they handle the dead and how they clean dead bodies, they weren't dying as much from the Black Plague as other people. And so other people walk around and they're just like, oh, we noticed that the Jews aren't really dying a lot from this shit. It's not because we're dirty as fuck. It's because you are evil and you probably started it. So that is yet another thing where Jews in history have been the scapegoat. And they're literally just chilling, doing their own thing, not fucking bothering everyone. What I want to say is like anti-Semitism, it's wrong. It leads to genocide. It leads to violence. The reason why Kanye's... Um, comments are anti-Semitic is because it blames Jewish people for regular fucking problems. Like if Kanye could have came out and said, capitalism owns the black voice, that's, that's more accurate. That's a different fucking thing. But you can't have problems and blame it on Jewish people. That is anti-Semitic. Hitler did it when Germany, after World War I, their economy was fucked up after like the Great Depression and shit. He said it was because of the Jews. And then look what fucking happened. When you have a platform um, you have to be very careful about spreading white supremacy, misogyny, and a couple of other things that I don't want to talk about without getting demonetized and getting shut down. But we definitely have to stop all of that shit at the door. I feel like we are at the place where we are with Kanye because we did not check him with the Candace, <laughs> the Candace Owens shit. We did not check him with the maggot, MAGA, hot, MAGA hat wearing shit. 
we don't check a lot of people with the white supremacy shit that they say a lot of the shit that kanye says actually aligns with a lot of the shit that the right says but because they use dog whistles <laughs> and a lot of us don't catch it we don't check them as hard on it we say oh no this person has a lot of good ideas like if i had a dollar for every time that i heard people say like oh trump has a lot of good ideas but then we excuse a lot of the other stuff this is how we get p um to this point with Kanye because I want to get this video out <laughs> um and it's a lot more that I want to cover and I don't want this to be an hour-long video um I'm gonna make a part two of this video and in part two we're going to cover more statements with the drink champs interview we're going to talk about mental health um the statement that he made on Chicago um crime and we're going to dive a little deeper into Candace Owens so make sure that you subscribe so um you'll be notified when that video comes out but as always thank you for being a member of the trap tribe also, if you do want to support my channel, make sure you subscribe to my page on um, Instagram. It's um, 10 bucks. You're going to get free um, um, updates. You're going to see this video uncut and everything. And you also will get um, a free um, tarot reading from me, personal reading. And you'll also get free entry into my book club as well. So make sure you stay connected with me. All right. I love you guys and bye.